but they're absolutely ideal for doing things like patrolling the Rio Grande, patrolling long border areas where you can't deploy um, uniformed troops, or for resolving situations which are too politically difficult to get uniformed troops or proper patrolmen involved in. I mean, an urban siege scenario, for instance, like, say, um, the Russian siege of Grozny. Like, no one wants to have to be the first tank driver to go into an occupied city and have all those RPGs and things blasting at you. The idea of drone soldiers was always um, kind of a natch. We've had drone aeroplanes for a long time, and I think now it's looking increasingly clear with DARPA and with um, the talent program and stuff, that we're going to have drone soldiers within the next 10 years or so. And they will be heat-seeking. And they will be fully battlefield responsive and auto-independent. You will have a VDU operator at a great distance who will be monitoring them through their um, remote control eyes and things. But they're still, in real life, genuinely aiming at having these things being what they call 100% battlefield responsive, to be able to make their own decisions and to be able to have some degree of autonomy within all that. And, um, of course, in real life, they'll be fitted with weapons, and the one in hardware is de-weaponized. It uses um, the, the, the bits and pieces it finds around the flat, the power saws, etc. In real life, they're going to have guns, and they'll have, they're going to fit them with microwave weapons, which I quite like. It means that they'll be able to not only see you through the wall, they'll be able to cook you through the wall as well. They'll be able to zap your heat shape without having to actually even get that close to you. Uh, they've been testing the microwave weapons in Iraq and stuff. They've got sort of a wide beam facility which just causes your flesh to kind of sting, but if you tighten the band, you can basically you know, cook people from the inside out, and I reckon that's all well, that's coming in our future. The, um, the talent program, which has been up and running for a few years now, which has really been going at it, their intention is to replace something like three-quarters of the American fighting force by the year 2020 with droids. And um, they've also got a civilian outlet where non-weaponized versions are currently available over the net. Uh, I'm thinking here of Big Dog, which is the first version to go wholesale over the net, which is very similar to the Mark 13. They, they, they've got um, legs, basically, as Alvi, the, the droid um, guy in the movie, puts it, more legs than a fucking spider. But you want legs so you can crawl over things. Like, if you've got wheels, like your Mars lander, you're just going to run into a rock and stop moving. But it made sense. They had a little critter called Dante a few years ago for exploring volcanic vents, which, and I figured that ultimately, like a spider a crab, it was the way to go because you need them to be able to go over things. But if you check out like the Talon Program's website, you'll be able to see now that these things can actually not only climb concrete, they can climb glass. They've got droid spider type things which literally go up sheer glass surfaces and things. They're getting very, very agile. In the original hardware script, unable to, something we couldn't realize on the budget. Of course, the thing was meant to go up walls and over the ceiling and stuff. When it grabbed the security guard, it was the whole scene played on the ceiling. Uh, we couldn't afford to do that in the, with the, the equipment we had. But they were meant to be a lot more agile. In the film, it kind of clings to the outside of the apartment building. But I'd imagined in the script the thing being able to scuttle up the, the exterior wall of the building a lot more easily. And the first droid to actually kill anyone was a few years ago. It happened about five years ago in the West Bank. It was a British-made mine-clearing droid, which had been specially modified by the Israelis, which had apparently zapped to the potential suicide bomber. They showed it on the television. It was pretty confusing because it was in the, but the, but the clip I saw on the TV, it was dragging the guy back across the road by his leg and his T-shirt had ridden up. And I couldn't see any sign of a suicide belt or a bomb or anything, so I didn't know how the droid had figured out he was a suicide bomber or what authority it had zapped him. But uh, nonetheless, it seemed like the first um, civilian casualty of a, of a war droid um, so far.